During a Christmas, more than a decade ago, when I was a wee little tyke, I played a PlayStation 2 demo disc and watched my older brother start up Spyro 2 with glee. For one reason or another, I found myself trying out the demo for the first level of Klonoa 2, Lunatia's Veil, vale, a side-scrolling platformer whose rich colours and whimsical nature became etched into my mind for years. Now after finally tracking down a copy at a small beach town of all places, I got to fully play it after so long. I'd be lying if I said Klonoa 2 is a masterpiece. It is, however, a highly polished, charming and memorable game that despite its rarity and perhaps childish presentation is well worth your time and money. Klonoa 2 is a game of surprises, going from a family-friendly appearance initially to a more metaphysical and even darkly psychological nature. The titular protagonist Klonoa suddenly appears in the world of Lunatia, a land made up of four distinct kingdoms that are suffering from a corrupting force of chaos and instability. After meeting with the priestess in training Lolo and her assistant and friend Popka, they're tasked with returning harmony to the world via ringing of four bells corresponding to the different kingdoms. They're harassed along the way by the Sky Pirates Lorena and Tad who want the bell's power for mysterious reasons. All the while, Klonoa himself is called to by a disembodied voice for help. The structure of the story is fairly generic, formulaic stuff that we've gone through numerable times. What's different is the tone. Klonoa 2 is no Drakengard or Nier in terms of subverting expectations, but for a kid's game, how it touches on identity crisis, loneliness, and even maturity was very surprising. There's a few emotional scenes and some character development that I didn't see coming. It made the journey and characters a lot more relatable and likable as we ourselves will question our own abilities and place in life. Characters speak in a fictional language to differentiate themselves and probably to cut down on dubbing expenses, much like a Rayman or Prancer Dragoon. The numerous in-engine cutscenes are acceptable while they occasionally enter the uncanny valley with some very weird facial animations. Exploring Lunatia's various stages is like experiencing a lucid dream. They heavily use sky blues and forest greens along with deep sunset oranges. It's a very broad, relaxing colour palette. The environments don't make a whole lot of sense with background patterns and bizarre structures, but that's kind of the point. This is a world that straddles the line of reality and dream. This is further reinforced with the use of music which extends from acoustic strings, percussions and flutes to really abstract synths and distorted melodies that really unnerved me. The gameplay of Klonoa 2 is typical side-scrolling goodness with a focus on mixing platforming and puzzle solving to proceed from area to area. Klonoa 2 has no real attack besides grabbing enemies who can either throw or use to propel themselves higher. The short range means you must be accurate and mindful of your distance. You can toss enemies to the sides and the background to kill opponents or activate switches or items. Usually though, you'll be using them to circumvent many platforms and barriers that you'll encounter. Klonoa can briefly remain in the air with his ear things. It may feel floaty initially, but these are tight controls. Every mistake felt like my own and not poor level design, so frustration is kept minimal. The game has a lot of variation in its levels, from fast paced surfing, highly varied boss fights, or levels that require you to manipulate the environment in some unique way. The consistent influx of new hazards keeps things fresh throughout. As you can clearly see, Klonoa 2 is another take on the 2.5D subgenre, one that combines both 3D and 2D perspectives and gameplay. I love this style in games like Mischief Maker and the more recent Inside, but it's always remained very obscure. I love to see more indie devs pick it up. The prevalence of extra lives, frequent checkpoints, and health items make game overs rare. This can be an issue as it's already quite easy. The few challenging parts are soon over, and only the last few stages offer any resistance. There are also some of my favourite sections with how they test all your skills from earlier. It's a nice climax. There are some collectibles in the form of six different stars in each level, which unlock additional artwork if you're really into that. Because the levels are already linear, and more importantly fun, collecting them isn't a hassle. The picturesque, vibrant scenery of Klonoa's stages made it a mostly peaceful and enjoyable experience. The 8 hour length and lack of additional exploration or interesting collectibles should be taken into account with its steep price, but what is here is a fluid, well designed game that doesn't outstay its welcome. It was a joy revisiting this part of my childhood and the platforming genre's glory days. I walked away feeling very content in playing such a well made video game with barely any flaws, aside from a few nitpicks. Actually getting a copy of Clone 2 is arguably harder than it's worth, with its rarity and collectability only rising, yet I'd still say it's worth it. It's another bygone franchise that still contains so much charm and potential that I'd happily play another sequel. If you love platformers or just well-made games, then Klonoa 2 will not disappoint in the slightest.